Good morning. Um, we get uh, welcome <laughs> to um, this uh, time, this space, and uh, I'm I'm glad you're joining us um, to have a, a a bit of time with God, a bit of time looking at His Word, and uh, a bit of time uh, worshiping. Um, and uh, so we're in a, a very interesting time. Um, lots of things are happening across the world, um, but this is a, a moment that we can um, just lay everything aside for a minute and um, focus on God. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you meet us wherever we are, in whatever struggles or whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. And we thank you that you welcome us with open arms. You are our Heavenly Father and you love to spend time with us. So we pray that this morning, as we have time with you, as we give this time to you, um, that we would feel refreshed and we would hear your voice um, through uh, the prayers, discussions and, and songs um, that we have uh, during this period of time and after uh, for your glory and your kingdom. Amen. So we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about grace today, and grace is a is an amazing, amazing word, uh, and it's it's exciting and it's challenging. And um, the passage today is a fantastic passage from the book of Romans, and Alistair is going to read it for us. So it's Romans uh, chapter five, and it's verse one through to verse eight. So thank you very much. Good morning. This morning's readings from Romans 5 verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us you see at just the right time when we were still powerless Christ died for the ungodly very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thanks be to God. So in this this uh, this passage, um, the writer to the to the Church of Rome is. So I feel like it's it's a it's like a, a reminder of the perspective that they should be that they are operating from. So sometimes just a shift in perspective can change the way you look at a whole situation, the way you look at yourself, the way you look at your suffering, the, the obstacles. Like there's so I there there's these um there's an artist who does uh, street art and he does um he he draws a chalk paintings on the floor. And when you look at it from any other angle, there are these make huge, huge long um, drawings that make no sense unless you look at them from a specific perspective and then all of a sudden it just kind of comes alive like you can move yourself into that perspective and then everything seems to make sense it just it looks uh, unreal it looks amazing um, and and they're very popular these pictures all over the internet we'll see if we can get something uh, that you can see um, but it feels like that's what the writer is trying to um, is trying to get the get us to understand that if we shift ourselves into that position, things make so much more sense. Things are so much more manageable, and so much more there is so much more freedom, uh, and things come alive when you start seeing it from that particular perspective. So this um, it starts off by saying um, that you've been justified through faith, but there's a particular phrase that I thought was a really good one. It says um, we've gained. Uh, access by faith into this grace in which we now stand so it's about so what I feel like um, the the message for today is about standing in grace what does it look like to stand in grace to have that position of grace 
um, when you are looking at your problems, when you're looking at yourself. It says right at the beginning, it says, first things first, we are justified through faith. And that's by grace. So grace, it's, um, grace is a, a word that's kind of touted around, but just so that we're on the same page. Grace is um, being, it's, it's completely positive. It's a, like, it's for no logical or there's no balance to it. It's just positive. So it's about getting something that you don't deserve. Or it's about not getting like a punishment or a consequence that you do deserve. It's, it's just positive. And it's grace is what God offers to us. So forgiveness is grace. So forgiveness, you haven't earned forgiveness, um, that you've done something. And the consequence of that is that you're, you've upset mum or dad, or you've, you have um, had an argument with somebody and they're annoyed at you. And that's the consequence of your actions. So something that you've done has a consequence and their choice to forgive you is grace. You haven't earned forgiveness. It's, a, it's just something that we love to do that should be part of our, our natural way of dealing with things. And we encourage that. We encourage forgiveness and we encourage freedom. And this is, what, this is where we start from with this, that where we stand with God, God offers us forgiveness, not because of what we've done, but because of what he's done for us. And that, so that's where it starts from. In fact, it begins and ends with that. In fact, the last verse of this, which is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, it says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were at our worst, if all of our decisions, the bad decisions that we've wanted to do in the past, if we'd made all of those bad decisions and we were the worst version of ourselves, God still thought he's worth dying for. Because that is total grace. That's love that comes from a gracious heart. So that's operating in grace. So that's us. That's standing in grace. That's how we are between us and God. But then Paul, uh, the writer to the Romans, takes us straight to how it applies to our situation as well. So it says... Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us. So the first thing is in our sufferings, we can rejoice. <laughs> Hello, you. What are we doing here? Colouring. Is that what we're doing now? We can do some colouring. You were doing reading before, weren't you? <laughs> oh, shall I get you the pens? One second. You can colour next to me though, okay? We can't colour on our own because you drew on the floor last time. Okay. You right there? So, um, yeah, sufferings. One of the things that is, um, it's really hard to be positive when you're going through sufferings. It's really hard to rejoice in suffering because suffering is painful. And there are people across the world, every time we look at the news, particularly at the moment, we're seeing people suffering across the world in ways that we, sometimes we don't understand. And sometimes it's in ways that we don't expect. Um, sometimes it's the person that's next door to us that we hadn't even noticed. But, or maybe it's us and we suffer ourselves. And sometimes it can become really difficult to rejoice in our sufferings. Often it can become really difficult to rejoice in our sufferings. But this is reminding us that suffering produces perseverance. As we suffer, we go through our sufferings and we can... Uh, uh, we recognize as we persevere, we can continue um, through, uh, that there is a journey through sufferings. And suffering, uh, perseverance produces character. There's a humility and, uh, and a hope that comes from suffering. And hope is a really powerful thing. Hope is grace-filled. Hope is, is believing in something that you can't yet see. It's something that doesn't exist yet. It's something that there's no reason for you to think that this could happen. But hope means that you can believe in that. Hope means that there is something beyond where we are, something better 
It's this grace-filled potential that's hopeful. And, uh, and the other thing that I love about this is where it says, hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us. And the part of that that I thought was really powerful is the fact that it says the Holy Spirit has been given to us and he pours his love out into us. So we walk through our suffering. That's true. And there is pain and there is... And... You're done, you're done, you're done. Pardon? You're done. Not yet. No, nearly. <laughs> so we walk through our suffering and there is pain. And there is times when we have to fight our way through our suffering. Perseverance is a character trait that it says comes from suffering. Perseverance is something that we have to push through. It doesn't happen straight away. But it is. it does remind us that Jesus walks with us. He has the Holy Spirit living inside of us that feeds us his love, his grace-filled love. So that it's not conditional. It's not something that we need to earn. It's something that he feeds into us. And so uh, standing in grace is not just a position between us and God. It should remind us that we are all on an equal playing field. There is nothing that we can do to make ourselves worthy of God's love. But, and there's nothing that anybody else can do to be worthy of God's love. No matter how bad you feel, no matter about how bad you think that person is, that person is still loved by God. And actually, it's something that we can, that as we stand in grace, are the obstacles and the people that we believe can't change or those things that just trap us, whether it's whether we feel isolated in this scenario or whether we feel like we're in uh, stuck in this position that can't move. But actually, grace, love-filled hope takes us beyond where we believe, where we think is the end. And it can, hope can take us to a place that is so much further and so much bigger and so much better, which is why when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray your kingdom come and your will be done, not our will, but his will, that we can hope that there is something beyond what I can even imagine um, uh, as we stand in grace and as we look at this world through grace lenses um, that we can see the possibilities and the hope and love should inspire us to see the 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 what is beyond what we can see and what we think is potential so standing in grace uh, is something that is not just uh, should be not just a challenge or a, an encouragement to us uh, individually but also the way that we interact with the rest of the world it should be a, a challenge to hope beyond what we can see but also a challenge to be gracious a challenge to give uh, to forgive um, without expecting, without being conditional, um, and to endure, to persevere, and to recognize the value in struggles, to recognize the value uh, in hope uh, and believing that we can get through things. So we pray that you would have grace uh, as we go through this period of time, this, this very tumultuous time, uh, whether it's confined in your own home or whether it goes beyond that. Um, but we, we pray, may you have grace, may you experience the love of God that is, uh, that is filled with grace. And every time um, you are confronted with suffering, that with struggles, may you find grace um, to persevere through and a hope that will take you through. So we're going to sing uh, this song, which is, um, it's the blessing. Uh, and it's a great, beautiful song. It's a, it, it kind of went round, uh, did the rounds kind of at the beginning of this. But I think it's a great song to come back to regularly uh, because it is a, a blessing from um, uh, the, I think, Deuteronomy, um, where it came from. Uh, but it was a, a, a teaching of how you will bless the, the people of God. Uh, and so this is a, a great a great um, message for us to hear. Uh, so feel free to join in uh, if you uh, know it. Uh, and if you don't know it, feel free to just listen to the words uh, and let yourself be blessed. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. you and keep you 
Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you, Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. 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 favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. 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 So as we go from here today, may you be encouraged to stand in grace, to be reminded of who you are through grace and to be able to approach every situation, be it good, be it bad, be it suffering, be it rejoicing in the grace and the love 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.